very often times people are deported to the wrong home. So what happens post-deportation is a key question that scholars are looking into now. It's a new field of study. A European Commission study from 2011 mentions that only in 13% of cases do we know what happens post-deportation. So most often we just don't know. So research that I've conducted in Afghanistan shows that uh, three out of four uh, forced returnees, deportees from the UK in this instance, leave again. And they leave again to go back to the country that deported them. So in terms of deterrence, deportation is clearly not an effective mechanism when people who are returned leave again. Returns usually leads to one of three uh, scenarios. One, very often times people are deported to the wrong home. So in the cases of Afghans or Somalis, they usually lived as refugees in other countries, in countries of asylum. So I met, uh, for example, Ibrahim in uh, Herat at the western border in Afghanistan with Iran. And he's been stuck in Herat working in a hotel, trying to pay his way out of, out of Afghanistan to Iran, where his family actually is. He is only 19, his parents live in Iran, but he was deported to Afghanistan because that's what his passport says he's from. But that's not where his home is. Another example of what happens to people is the threat of kidnapping. In the West, as soon as an international aid worker is kidnapped in Somalia or in Afghanistan, it makes headlines. But the majority of kidnappings are actually of their own citizens, of locals. And why are they kidnapped? Because they're usually seen as being either linked to a political elite or having the financial means to pay a ransom. So the criminality around kidnapping is huge in countries like Afghanistan. Herat has been dubbed uh, the capital city of kidnapping uh, in Afghanistan. And a third final um, threat that is the most dangerous and the ultimate threat, the end of all journeys for deportees is death. And in this case, the data lacks but we know from anecdotal evidence, and the media has been very strong in documenting this, um, Afghans who have been returned from Australia in the past two, three years, there have been at least three, four cases of them having been killed, and this has all been documented. So why do they re-migrate to the country that deported them? One side of the issue is the human rights uh, violations and the fears they have for their lives, whether it's uh, the fear of being kidnapped, killed, the second reason, or the second set of reasons, are more personal reasons. Uh, they're related to their families. Usually migrating to Europe means a whole family, a whole community, invests money. So they take loans, they get indebted. Uh, up to $20,000 if they traveled with forged documents, uh, at minimum $5,000. $5,000 is an annual revenue for, for an Afghan bureaucrat. So you can imagine the level of investment uh, and debts families have had to incur. They have to repay those debts very simply. Uh, and their only hope for doing so is, is to be able to work or get uh, money abroad. Being returned without fulfilling the promise of the migration means you are a failure. And in societies like Afghanistan, that personal sense of failure towards a family and a community uh, means that they are not capable socially, uh, culturally, to reintegrate. And a third and uh, very important factor that we see on the rise uh, in situations of returns and deportations is the sense of contamination. That people who spend time in the West uh, now have different values. They don't think like normal people in those countries. Uh, they have a different mindset. They have, um, they have changed. Now much more can be done if states actually invested money in it, and it's not that expensive uh, to build monitoring as part of return programs. So before people are returned to some of the most dangerous countries in the world, um, building in those return programs, monitoring. It is the responsibility of states and organizations facilitating returns to ensure that people aren't put in harm's way. Mm -hmm.